Would somebody like to give our friend Dwarf here a recap at what happened last time during Lord of the Rings? The last thing I remember was we were, I was walking through the woods and I heard a bunch of like orcs and wargs. And then I heard a call them a dwarves and I alerted them that they were over there. And then they went to like scout that party out. And then I met up with the rest of the group. And, uh, then I guess we went to jump the orcs. False on the end of that, but you were close. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, no, that was, was that was pretty accurate till the end. Um, anybody else want to help? Him? Hey. Uh, at the end, we made it to the town of Bree, where we were, I, I think, unfairly asked way too many questions by the uh, gatekeeper, but we finally got in, and. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, you were not unfairly asked too many questions by the gatekeeper, he was doing his job. All right, it's his job to ask questions. Uh, showing everybody I feel like we around. Were racially profiled. Exactly. Well, you, 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 we don't have a lot of folk that look like you around yeah. here. What? What's? You know, why, why are you here? That, that, you can listen, we don't like that type of, of racial profiling. Yeah, in was, our in our town. There was there was a lot of racial profiling from yeah. that guard. But luckily, don't worry, Valandiel was able to smooth things over and with his silver tongue get us through and was yeah. showing everybody the town. And I think that's about when we, we called it was just kind of like the introduction to the town. No, we got oh into the tavern God. because we were talking about the who side was of the prancing where. pony. Yeah, we were in the prancing pony and then we decided that the dwarves were all going to camp because there were so many of them. They didn't have room for the dwarves. So then we said that they could camp, and then he said he could rustle up food for them. And then um, they were brought back to the attention that the dwarves had food, and we were discussing that. And then uh, we were picking out who was staying in what room, like with who. Yeah, so in the troll shawls, Dustin, with they're not, they're just gl glossing it over for. Oh yeah, for sorry, you. I didn't. I you thought didn't you said, I didn't hear the beginning part. I can well, tell that part about what but I there, saw. There's so yeah, there's some there's some key things in the troll shawls that you just completely over, like under explained. Well, I, I didn't Dustin. overlook but, uh, it. I reported it. I don't know why we have to give give the recap because we never do a satisfactory job. Well, I figured you would have told him the what happened in there. You just were like, ah, we you know. You gave Travis. us food. We walked through Travis. the woods. Travis. <laughs> yes, it's Hi. Who? Travis, who's who's the DM? My Did you just ask? boyfriend. Or okay. I should say my my civil uh what was it called? Union. Civil union partner. Okay. It's it also doesn't matter. it's also important for me to see how much you remember. Mm, yeah, don't don't bet on that never, one. You'll never get it right. All right, well, Lauren, why don't you save him and tell Dustin what happened and try this inside the troll shawls. Okay. So I asked if I could go up on these rocks so I could look ahead just because um, we got warned when we met up with Death's character. He said that he saw orcs. We didn't exactly know. Like, he had the general direction of where he thought they were, so we were trying to go around. Oh. And... I just wanted to make sure that there was, like, nothing ahead. I was just trying to check ahead. So I went up on the rocks and looked, and I saw, like, mangled animals, like, laying all over the place, I believe. I think that was it. It was mangled animals, right, Bill? Mm-hmm. Okay. They were all over the place, and then did I see, and then I heard voices. With my elf ears... I could hear men's voices, but I could not hear what they were saying, but they were human voices. And I got down and I told them. And at first, Travis's character said he was going to go by himself and go check it out. And we were like, I don't think that's a good idea. And then we all decided as a group to move forward um, and go to Bree because we were trying to get Frodo. So we kind of just didn't deal with that at all. So they heard work noises in, in a place where before they entered, uh, Sir Valiant, nope, that's not right. Uh, Sir Valandiel said that there's nothing in these woods aside from trolls, so we shouldn't have any problems. And then when they encountered problems, that you know, Sir Valandiel said, let's just leave. Um, but they encountered signs of orcs and wargs, and they also encountered uh, 
men in the forest, but that was it. Your your dwarves were fine. Um, I'll. But in Bree, I assumed all these dwarves, and that's all I wanted you to say, Travis. Just illuminate that you guys left the wargs and the orcs to their own devices. Um, I'll be honest, you're right. I forgot about that part because I I don't think Dustin would have done that. No, I'm too bad he wasn't here. Yeah, I'm just well, saying. Should have, should have been instead of being sick. <laughs> he had his uh, son's graduation. So I didn't think you were going to walk or march 75 dwarves into Bree and cause a widespread panic. No. Um, so what are I... these 75 dwarves doing? Um, I think that they would have been out of town, maybe like a quarter mile away, just set up okay. camp. I mean, I probably would have had at least like five that would come with me. As like personal escort, but no. <laughs> Which we said. Say you were worried we were gonna offend the dwarves by asking them to camp out. There wasn't enough space. Oh, that's fair. Uh, it was well. Bad. It's more for the dwarves' benefit because they don't really like to be around a lot of people, and Bree's kind of a mixing pot, so they would rather keep to themselves. Just so you know, for your notes, Dustin, it was two weeks to get from um, the Troll Shaws to Bree. So that's how long you guys have been. Oh, sorry, I sneezed. On the road. And then Callisto, because Death's character doesn't speak common, he only speaks Elvish. I'm learning, though. Yes, uh, Callisto asked if you guys, if she could learn the languages. And uh, I said yes, and they've been rolling successes, similar to Vampire the Masquerade. So I think I said it had to be higher than a ten, right? F to to learn base or com like basic language. So I think some of, some of you, and I think I rolled for you, Dustin. You can choose. You can roll if you get better. But you got seven successes to learn Elvish, unless you already had it. And I needed you, everybody to have fifteen successes to learn another language, and you can roll once per day. Yeah. It's seven for common right now. Yeah. Also, I have the 150 troops as well. Oh, uh, you took command? Uh, yeah. It was part of my class. Which I class? Uh, I'm a fucking chopper, but I'm, I'm a blade boy. That, that's not a class. I don't know, bro. I'm looking. Commands of. Uh, uh, it what? is command, yeah. Yeah, it's an edge. Command. It's an edge. So no, well, you, you took that as an edge? Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are you doing? Where's your... So what do you have? 150 wood? I left 100 elves in Lorien, and oh. I had 50 elves... Uh, I don't know. Let's camp somewhere. Do uh, you want me to pick a place? Well, yeah, I need to know where they're at. Sure. So this uh, is, yeah. is Valathrang, right? Yeah. Oh uh, no, it's just Thang. Uh, the R was erroneous. Uh, you have Vala in the front. Bad. That's fine. Okay. Oh yeah, it's Vala, but the last name is Thang. So you have a hundred and you have a hundred in one spot and fifty in another. A right? uh, hundred in Lorien at home, guarding the town and being on call for them. And then I brought fifty with me, and I'll leave them at uh, Midwinter Marshes. That's nearby, but not far away. Be right back near, to near the main road that is uh go goes the east road near the east road far enough off the road they won't be detected yeah why is it not oh because i'm not putting it in the right spot 100 elves all right thing and then 50 elves Thing. Yeah. Let's out of Bree. The elves would probably blend in a lot better than the dwarves. Probably. What's that? Elves or what? I said the elves would probably blend in a lot more than the dwarves. Probably, yeah. yeah. Seems logical. <clears throat> All right, Death, you can move them where you want. Yeah, uh, they're at Midwinter Marsh near the road. 
Go uh, ahead. It's, it's like right next to this, right next to Bree. Go ahead and move them where you need to, sir. Yeah, well, they're just there camping. That's where they are. Right, yeah, that's, that's fine. Just move them where you want them. Oh, wait, on the map in the game? Yeah, there's, I gotta change their icons, so there's these, but if you cover, put your cursor over them, that wait, it'll show. Trollshaws is the map we're on, right? No, we're in Bree. Bree. Fuck. Bree! Checking on that language thing. Okay. See if the dwarf lord had something on that. So you well, you need to be the your dwarves are on the map of Middle Earth, Death. Uh oh, okay. Just Middle Earth. And you got uh, you had enough food, Dustin, to feed yourselves and your dwarves for the journey to Bree. So unless you guys, unless you brought like caravans and stuff, you guys don't have much left. Oh, okay. time to ride the city. Uh, hey, Frail, I can't move that the the elves. Uh, you're right. You can't. Hold on. All right. So, sorry. Can you mark on the map where you want? You said you wanted a hundred in Lothrain, right? Yeah, in Lothlorien, and then, uh, this map is different, I, th I think. A about where the dwarves are, but, uh, a little further to the west. Well, west is Bree. Oh, then east. A little further east. Back towards the Troll Shoals. Yeah, but, like, I still can't move that token, but, like... Yeah, I got it, in between yeah. If you, if you see where the dwarves are now and where the elves are now, put the elves halfway between the, the dwar between the dwarves, like towards the dwarves. Like halfway no, diagonally? No, no, like laterally to the west. So they're both on the road. I want them to be closer to the dwarves, but not on top of them. Not if I could move the fucking thing. You I mean, would just well, you say to the west, like to the to okay. The now there? go on the other side of the dwarves. That's where I just had them. <laughs> Move it, move it closer to the dwarves, and yeah, up right there. That's where I'm. Right. Thank you. I'm sorry. So, do these guys have like uh, caravans that they're holding all their food and stuff with? No, my guys are hunters. They're out uh, well, hunting. The dwarves. Yeah, the elves don't really need to eat much. But how about the dwarves? Yes. Okay. They would have a couple caravans. All right. So I'll say that they'll probably have enough to get to the Shire then. But after the Shire, you got to start feeding these these puppers. <laughs> well, if you'd like, uh, uh, as we move, I'll have my elves do the hunting. Your elves may not be happy about hunting to feed the dwarves. I'll just tell you that right now. Get a fucking decision. That's what being commanded means. Yes, you don't but, have to but, like it, but, but you have well, to that's it. not true. Command means that you are commanding them, but they don't have to follow you i mean then what's the point in having commands in the first place i'm just saying they may not be happy about having to be the foragers for the dwarves which i don't think is that uncommon for lord of the rings i mean that may be but as a as a as an elf i don't see the point in in the good races squabbling it seems foolish to me well, let's hope your so, your elves feel the same. I mean, I wouldn't do it without rolls. I wouldn't just say they're going to be upset about right, it. Right, right. Okay. So then that's all squared away. And then inside Bree, we didn't do a whole lot, right? You guys just went to the inn and nothing that's super exciting happened there, we, correct? Uh, whoa, we found out that the mead comes in, in, in pints. You did find that out. That is right. I mean, the dwarves already knew that. Come on. Well, I don't know why we have to make this about races all again, but whatever. I mean, I don't know because the word racial profiling doesn't exist in Lord of the Rings. That's why. You're absolutely right. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions, Dustin? Or no. any questions? Okay. okay. All right. Well, with that being where we're at, you guys are in the inn at Bree. I'm sorry, in the end of the Prancing Pony, and you guys have just been served your food. 
There is a huge crowd in there, and like I said before, Butterbur is running around. Lauren Jelly and Lally in the background, and yeah. just to make sure we're on the same page before we quit getting to character, the whole reason that we came here was to be able to find out who or where Frodo is based off of Lauren. I forgot her character's name, but Lauren's um, conversation with Bilbo, correct? Are you asking me? I'm asking the group in general. Like that was the whole reason we went west to Bree from Rivendell, right? We're looking for Frodo, just so I know what our goal is going forward. Uh, or maybe, maybe this should be ha said in character, maybe at the table. So fuck it, if you want, I can make it in character instead, because I don't think that'd be out of like that'd be weird for us to be able to have that discussion of why we're here and what we want to do now that we made it to a checkpoint. I mean, you guys are able to have private conversations in here with as loud as it is. Um, cool. You would, All right, then you yeah. know, maybe we'll, we'll have it in character then. So, uh, Valandiel, you know, gets his food and and you know gets his pint of of mead and you know leans in and starts eating and kind of looking around and making sure everybody's satisfied with their food in the current situation. Hmm. What's everybody else doing? Arvin's just enjoying the pint. Yeah, yep. eating anything? I'm wondering why we left the, the wargs to their own devices. Are you asking that, or is that what you're just kind of like thinking about? Yeah, that's that's kind of what he's thinking about. It's Arvin fine. You see him like wake up as he takes a sip. All right. <laughs> Why did we leave um, them there? My God! We can go back if you'd like. They might still be there. I don't think he's actually mentioning it. Unless, are you? I'm sorry. I should make this for you. Are you, Dustin? I'm trying to remember what, what voice I used for Tarbin. Russian. It was, was it Russian? Oh, yeah. So creative. <clears throat> hey, you, you do what's good and you stick with it. That's great. Elegant. <laughs> I f feel that they must have been hunting something, looking for something. Uh, who are you talking about, Tarvin? The wargs back in the troll shells. There were goblins, too. And hunting for something seems likely. They don't normally come this far. So not to metagame, but do we know that they're hunting Gollum? No, I don't think so. Nobody. I mean, the only thing you know about Gollum is that uh, he escaped uh, with uh, Mirkwood. That's that's the last time anybody saw him. Yep. Okay. Do we know? Um, Just trying to think. <clears throat> do we know his obsession with the ring? Uh, you have uh, there and get, there and back again a Hobbit's tale, so you know everything that was in Bilbo's book. Okay. So I yeah, we know that. Read it within the two week journey. So, so yeah, be, we definitely know about that. Then. So would it be too much to think that maybe they might be trying to track Gollum down, and Gollum's trying to find Bilbo? I mean, that's a metagamey question. I mean, that's why I'm asking out of uh, character. Okay, would that yeah. Be too much? Uh, I would. Without knowing anything about Gollum aside from what's in the book, and the only one who and Lauren's character doesn't even have intimate knowledge of it, she just knows that he was pr in prison and got out um, during an orc attack. Like he escaped the Mirkwood Elves. So what? I mean, why? Why? Kind of what I'm. Why? Kind of what I'm going on is, is that he knows where Bilbo's from. Right. He knows he's from. But he sat on that information for how long, and then now all of a sudden he's just going to go and get like that's what I'm saying. Like, why wouldn't he have done this before now? So maybe because yeah. he's afraid that the enemy is going to go after what he wants. I don't know. Well, I'm I'm not <laughs> arguing your point. I'm just saying time would say that he, whether he wanted it that much or not, he wasn't at any point. That's a really good question, actually. Like, why didn't Gollum try to go to the Shire? But, uh, I mean, he he didn't do it. And, obviously, 
the metagaming part of it is is he must have done something to go get it because he was following them in Moria. In the you know, if you look at the books. So something about him made him go that way. But uh he was to- but technically he was tortured in um, Mordor at that point. So he knew they were going to go get it. So he hasn't been tortured in Mordor timeline wise for this, you know what I mean? Okay. So, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. So to your point, yes, because he knew that Sauron was then going for it because he tortured him for it, but that hasn't technically happened. You don't know this, but that does- technically hasn't mm-hmm. happened yet. No, well, that makes sense. I just didn't want to say something that was a little too meta. No, that was a good question. But yeah, I mean, time would say that Golem is just sitting on this information for whatever reason. I guess Carbon would still be thinking what were they hunting to be this close? Uh, they, neglected, uh, they neglected to leave out that it was a baby warg, uh, like a young, a younger warg uh, sound that they heard. It wasn't a fully like built or uh, adulted, <laughs> whatever the word is, full, raised. It wasn't fully puberty raised. Yet. Yeah, it hadn't hit puberty yet. Okay. Sure. Um. Sure. So remind me real quick. Tarbin, what is it that you said for the conversation? Because we kind of took a break there. I just want to know if you actually have said anything or not. Out loud. I think my head said, wait, Dad, I didn't hear anything you said. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I had asked, so you and Bill had a little moment there to be able to have that that quick double, you know, double check in the facts, you know, sheet, whatever. In that time period, remind me, did you say something or were you just thinking it? I wouldn't necessarily say that he would be like talking to somebody in particular. I think he would just be kind of talking out loud about what he was thinking. So if someone wants to pick up on it. Gotcha. Thank you. The land deal does not. <clears throat> Has anybody here been to the Shire before? I have not. I th- not. I have not. This is a good no, time to be able it, to, to check in and see, re- remind ourselves, now that it's been a couple weeks, what our our goal has been so far and what what we plan to do with the next steps uh helga puts her hand up and she says i've been to the shire plenty of times i've actually lived there oh oh yeah and, and <laughs> tom what, what's your character's name anor anor has studied it and knows things about it and she used to live there so we've got two sources of I mean, information used to currently it's all the same thing i guess Well, the you great do, amount but... having all these people come to the Shire, or should we go into the smaller group? I mean, if you want to scare everybody in the Shire into thinking it's being invaded, then we can send all the elves and dwarves you have. No, that's not why I'm asking. I don't want to send anybody in and panic. We don't really want to draw too much attention to ourselves. I guess what I'm saying is that I'm willing to have my dwarfs stay here in Bree and only take a handful with me. Good talk. (laughs) I I mean, she's just sitting there thinking about it. I mean, I don't know. it's not every day, if if at all. The last time there were dwarves in the Shire was probably when, uh, and they actually came by secret. So, uh, the ones that dropped help uh, drop all the treasure off to Bilbo. So that's the last time probably anybody's seen dwarves that I can think of in the Shire was when Bilbo came back from uh, the Lonely Mountain. Mm. So that was what sixty years ago. Yeah. 
And that was like I've, uh, 10. <laughs> You're talking about 75, so, yeah. I've never been in the Shire South. This is far, as far south and west as I've been in a long while. Well, I feel like if there was a bunch of people marching on my city, I would be a little cautious. How do we want... Once again, what are we looking for while we are in the Shire? <laughs> We are looking for Frodo, are we not? I just wanted to make sure that that was still our main goal here. We, we've had quite a few options as far as opportunities to be distracted, but I want to make sure that this was still our focus. If Frodo does not have the ring, then we have to try to find it. If Frodo has the ring, then we will decide on what to do then. Um... Tarbin. Yes. If you believe that the uh, forces that we passed could potentially attack Bree, is that the reason why you're leaving your troops here? Well, it is part of the reason. The other part is I just don't want to freak the hobbits out. You know. Uh, that's a good point. If we're going into the Shire, the chances that we'll encounter anything dangerous seem dramatically low. Uh, perhaps I'll leave my elves stationed on the opposite side of the town. I'll, I'll move them while you uh, folk rest. And uh, I'll have them take position towards the south of the town. And then perhaps you could send one of your runners to alert your forces that there are elves stationed, and I'll make sure my elves know, so that they can, however grudgingly, they need to work together if there is an attack. And I'll make sure they know in no uncertain terms that if you violate my orders, I will uh, make sure you are punished appropriately. <laughs> yes. so. I will take all of the meat away from my dwarves, and that will be quite the punishment. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wish elves were so uh, easy to manage, my friend. I genuinely do. Well, the dwarves are temperamental, but mead is a very high, high price to have, and to lose that is rough. Very rough. I, makes me kind of crazy even really... thinking about it. I've heard the stories about the uh, dwarves' love for mead. Oh, I, uh, well, when you're mining underground all day. They need a little pick-me-up, right? Yes. Hurt the people too. I do not. Nope. Just, just, just me. Why not? Oh, you. Uh, high-ranking human. I. Well, among my people, I'm well respected. I wouldn't say I'm exactly high-ranking, but yeah. I'm still. I would. I believe a a valuable member of our order, the Grey Wardens, but or the Warden of the Grey Wood. However, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily I'm high ranking, but I was sent here to be among this group with all of you to be able to find out what was going on in Rivendell. And I do not believe that we could have fathomed the complexity that we we're about to find ourselves in. I, I, I agree with that, friend. Yes. This is much more grave than any of us had even begun to consider. Well, no arguments there. Is... So our goal is to find this Frodo still. So our plans are to travel to the Shire and to look for Frodo. What was his last name? Baggins. 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 Oh. Baggins. Baggins. 
I think uh, we might need to be selective on who we ask. Only from experience, hobbits do talk. And then you hear Baggins. I know Frodo Baggins. <laughs> Twice removed on my mother's side. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all of a took. Yeah. <laughs> You throw yourself in next time. Oh, I hope we go to Moria, but go on. No. <laughs> <sighs> Were we able to secure a room then? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you had rooms, and at this point in the night, you see that there is a hobbit uh, signing in. He puts an apron on and starts cleaning and bussing tables. Um, over over the you know the noise of the room, you hear him named Nob. Name's Nob. His name is Nob, and he's running around furiously trying to clean up after the people who are still eating, and those who are leaving. As the it starts to get darker, and Butterbur is running around and starting to light lanterns, um, the room gets a even though he's lighting the lanterns and you know hitting them up on the table, the room is still getting quite dark. Is there a guy in the corner smoking a pipe? There is not a guy in the corner smoking. Damn a pipe, it! But um, but yeah, I mean the place is starting to get a little more lively uh, as people are drinking more and uh, more people start coming into the town. People are kind of staring at your table. Uh, it's not every day you see dwarves, the elves, like we've said, probably mistaken for humans. But to have a halfling and a dwarf sitting at a table, I mean, you guys are getting some eyes. That's fine. If Helga was here, Nob would probably engage with her a little bit, but... Uh, as it starts to fill up, I kind of look around and say, before we head to the Shire, should we ask around to see if anybody has any idea about this Frodo Baggins here, or would we consider unwise to be mentioning it so far from his own. I... I don't think it's a good idea to start throwing his name out around here. I would... I would probably agree, so... We will, uh... Once we're finished eating here, I'm ready to begin preparing for the morrow and the travel onto the Shire. Yes. Unless anybody has any objections on talking about Frodo here? You mean about not talking about Frodo here? Yes. yes. No? On a need to know basis. Yes. But I guess. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I'm I'm good. So when I'm when I'm done eating, I'm gonna start heading to my room. Okay. After I wish everybody a good night. Did somebody say my name to you? Mm -mm. Did we all? I thought we didn't have enough rooms for everybody to be alone. Isn't that what you said, Phil? Uh, you remembered. Uh, yeah, that is did. true. Yes. I'm like the student in class who reminds a teacher about homework. Yes. I did not have that Fuck. in my notes, but yes. I do remember that now. Uh, uh, damn except it, that there was, uh, there was rooms enough for Helga and Tarbin because we had hobbit-sized rooms. We didn't have enough human-sized rooms. So how many rooms did we have to split between? Two? Yeah. Uh, rock, paper, scissors, I guess. <laughs> I was just going to go pick a room, but whoever would like to join me can join me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. It's a awesome party. Yeah. <laughs> the delicate human needs his sleep. Nice comfy bed. I look forward to a bed and to wash. <laughs> How many beds are in the room? One, one? bed. Yeah, one bed. Oh in the room. my God. What is the and... bed? Valandil is already on his way to go claim it. He was thinking ahead. <laughs> you didn't answer my question, the end. What size is the bed? The bed for a human? The hobbit? Yeah. What would be the hobbit size? No. 
or no, uh, the hop size. The human mean human size, size would be would probably be a queen, or queen smaller than a king, right? Yes. Yeah, queen it'd be, is a queen. Than it'd be a king. queen. Yeah, queen. Bigger than a twin, smaller than a king. Enough, Actually, enough to fit the three two of people. us aren't me, Tom, me, Tom, and Death are elves, correct? Yeah. What do you think? Right. You just... Oh, you guys are fine. We don't need to sleep. You're good. That bed's all yours. Perfect. I wasn't even worried about it. Because we need I'm like an hour, don't we? Sexuality. Yeah. Actually, you don't even really need an hour. You could just sit down and take like a respite. And that would be equivalent of eight hours of sleep. You don't really even sleep at all. Yeah, well, we don't need to sleep. Sleep. Well, okay. those who require sleep are resting. I will go and meet my troops, so as to not waste time. So I'm just gonna go with Valendiel and just watch him sleep. <laughs> <You're awesome. laughs> yes. Well, at least you'll be safe from muggers or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not uh, so, so, show you a sleep so, compatriot. I just so really much. want you to, to to act this out real quick with me. So I just <laughs> want to know, like, as soon as I get up, are you following me? Nope, I'm just watching you. I'm just sitting, oh. at, it, like, <laughs> sitting at the desk or whatever that's in there. No, I know, well, but... <laughs> I meant, like, the, from the how table. Did you get there? Did you follow me? Like, as soon as I got up from the table, did you just start, like, just like, okay, that's my cue, and just start going? Like a minute later. Oh, okay, so so I wasn't even aware, and so like literally as I'm in there and I'm like taking off my clothes. Whoa, here, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you get up from the table to go to your room, and Anor goes to follow. What does everybody? And then so Vela Thang Thang is just ousting. I you have it. You're in fantasy grounds as Vela Thang. Is that not your full? name? What's your actual yeah. name, Death? Okay. Valid thing. Valid yeah. So you're life. so you're just leaving. Yeah, I, I want to tell them, like, explain right. to the group that I need to confer with my elves to make sure that I work together with the dwarves and uh, help with hunting. And uh, I don't want to waste the, the group's time, so I'll do it while they're sleeping. It's only like a couple miles outside of town. Okay. All right. And Tarbin oh. and Aurelia or Ariel, what are you doing? Ariel. Ariel, uh, I'm going to stay. Well, that's not true. It's going to have to close, isn't it? The tavern's going to close. Well, it's still early. I mean, and and I mean, the, the, we're talking like maybe eight or nine o'clock at night. All right. Well, I guess I'll hang down there until it goes to close, and then, so then maybe I'll go up to one of their rooms to just sit in there and relax until it's time. Gonna watch For, well, the tavern. No, I'm not going to watch him sleep. You're watch Anor watch the <laughs> No. I might go into Callisto and uh, or, uh, what is, Matt, Hel what is Helga. Helga. I might go into Helga's room and just chill in there. Helga's, the Helga's probably going to gonna stay down here for a while. Helga's in no need to, to go and rest. Well, that's fine. I will worry about that when the tavern closes. I'm not worried about it until that happens. Okay. And then, Tarbin, what are you doing? Uh, Tarbin's going to send two of his five dwarfs to relay our plans for tomorrow back with the main camp. And, and Tarbin's probably going to have another, another pint of mead than he is going to go into where Valandil is and he's going to go sit in the chair and kick his feet up. Okay. And see what's going to happen between A and R. And <laughs> so, Valandil, as you start to make your way across the bar to the steps going upstairs to the rooms, you feel a grasp on your shoulder and the fingers dig in. What are you doing? I, abs I, I don't, like, turn to face it, but I just stop. And you hear a voice start to chuckle and say, <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you without your quiver so light with arrows. And I kind of turn around and I face the person that's talking to me. And you recognize this as one of your friends uh, who got sent to be the captain of the Southern Arab War Scout Patrol. It is Va Valinos, the Thistle Fox. 
known yeah. for his ability to blend in with wildlife and create various traps to mess with his fellow archer scout people, whatever you call yourselves. To mess with his fellow ones? Yes, he, he's very big prankster. Uh, he loves, okay. he loves, because he's, he's very stealthy. It's his reputation. He can blend in almost anywhere. And to try and, in his mind, improve his lessers, he sets up these very stupid, silly traps to get everybody's face red. And what's his name? Valanos, the Thistle Fox. All right. As I turn to face him, and I recognize him, I put a, you know, I, I get a big, you know, grin on my face, and I grip both shoulders, and I say, Valanos, all the way out here in Bree, is it time for a break already? A break? There's so much work to be done here in Erebor, especially in Bree, mind you. So much, you know, scouting and making sure that the evil forces of Mordor don't dare reach their foot in our lands. And that none of these barrels go dry without your help, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, but being stationed here has its perks. Uh, it still can blend in in the brush, mind you. Of course, of course. I would expect nothing less. So heading up north then. Actually heading a little bit west here shortly. What is west? You were told uh, to Shire. go north. The Shire. Why would you ever go there? Ah, uh, just some friends here needed some assistance with some business. Any motions to the table or where his uh, companions are? Uh, you know, hired to, to be able to assist. So he puts his hand on your shoulder and kind of looks around and tries to motion to somewhere more secluded. And I, I follow. And when you go over to a table, uh, kind of not by a bunch of people, he uh, sits down and there's just a drink there at this table and he motions you to have it. I, uh, I inspect the drink. It looks like some something, some flag in a mead somebody left. You can see backwash and food particles floating in it. Clearly, this was not a table he was sitting at. And he was just offering you somebody <laughs> else's drink. And so I just like put up my hands in front of me and kind of, you know, just kind of like silently motion. No, thanks. So any kind of uh, gets a serious face on. So you plan to ignore the orders of your scout leader? Of course not. Well, then why are you heading west instead of heading north? I was sent as you, you were there. You 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 were at the our, our gathering many weeks ago, and I was sent to go see the business going on in Rivendell. Right, and Rivendell. Last I checked, is to the east, and here you are, way west, west. and still yes. continuing to go. When I have just told you, you are being told, ordered, actually, uh, as he picks his head up a little bit, uh, to go north. Uh. Valandio leans in and he says, these are the high representatives from the other kingdoms around Middle-earth. They're the ones that met with me in Rivendell, and we are on official business from Elrond Half Elf himself. Oh, official business from Elrond. Well, huh. well then I guess you can just turn your back on your own kind as, as freely as anything. You have orders. You are being sent up north to patrol. We have reports of orcs coming down. Something has spooked them in the east, and they're starting to move in west. We're pulling all scouts inward. Whatever business Elrond has given you can wait. Last I checked, you were not the leader of the Wardens of the Grey Wood, and I respect and appreciate your advice my friend, Mr. Thistlefox. And he, you see his brow kind of furrow and he leans in. He's like, look, Valandiel. Strange things are going on, all right? The village, Bree is, is being, I don't, even, I don't even know how to explain it to you. Some people claim of disappearances and then when we go and check the f local farms, they're completely, the inhabitants are there. Uh, I don't understand what strange things are going on in Bree. I don't understand why orcs are suddenly leaving the mountains and heading west. But it's enough of a deal that the elves can't seem to deal with it. They're getting through elven lands, and now it's our job to handle it. 
Even to the north, we found small groups of orcs campaigning, uh, camping west of the mountains near elven borders. Somehow they're getting around elven patrols. It's, it's, it's not something to pull your nose up to. Why didn't you begin with this? It, it, I, I had no idea there was this dire of a situation. Well, that's why we're pulling everybody back to Bree and then sending them up north. I understand. I'll respond, but I must I must continue my business here, and I, but I will respond to our order within the next week. Well, enjoy your vacation to the Shire. I will pretend I didn't see you here, but I cannot stress enough the mission is at home. You're right, and I will be reconnoitering with you before you know it. Okay. Thank you so much for the advice, and it's great to see you. How, how, how about a drink on me? Oh, I don't drink. And uh, you see him fussle, rustle through a pack, and he pulls out a bunch of pamphlets of papers, and he says, be mindful of these routes, and he hands them to you. And you can see that um, there are several, he marks, um, let's pull up the map here so I can mark them on here. That there's several farm uh, outposts, farms. I don't know why I call them outposts. Um, outside of Bree, where can I draw X's? Where there have been reports of people missing, and then him going, or you know having them investigate it, and nobody's missing. All the people are there. They're accounted for. Um, he also puts circles around where camps of orcs have been starting to gather. Mm, where are those about on that map compared to Bree? You can't see it on the Middle Earth map? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was looking at the Bree map. Let me pull up on the Middle Earth map. Alright, let me quick check. Okay. I... Uh... Z, are those the X's X, that you put X, in? X's are the farms, the circles are the Circles games. are yes. the... Okay, okay, yes. great. Yep. This is, is, he, uh, is he giving this to me real, just real quick? Or yeah. is he... Yeah, yeah, he's, he's giving it to you, so that way you know... Um, okay. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a friend of yours. He wants you to know where to look and where to be careful. Um, and it's about that time... Uh, so you would be seeing him talk to this person... Uh, Aenor, Aenor, um, closely talking to this person. Are you just sitting there intently watching, or? Nope, I'm gonna go to the room. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And then, while you go upstairs, and this conversation wraps up, are you going right upstairs after this, Aenor? I'm sorry, the land deal. I'm sorry. Repeat that one more time. I was looking at the map. Are you going? Are you going upstairs after this? Uh. I I I I want I I go and I give him a firm handshake and I and I put a hand on his his shoulder and I say, "It was wonderful seeing you. If I get to see you tomorrow, please. I I I'd, I'd like to learn more of what I may have been missing. But in the circumstance that I don't, I look forward to seeing you shortly. And thank you for reminding me of my duty and for taking the time to share with me these notes. They're as always, they're invaluable. So it was wonderful to see you, my old friend. And he says, likewise. And even though I had to put on my former voice, or formal voice, remember that I am still your ally. I am still your friend. I would never expect anything less. Thank you. And with that, Valandil starts heading up the stairs. Give me a nimbleness check, please. Nimbleness. Uh, 2D6 what do I plus modifier? Two d six. I gotta pull up my sheet. Hold on. I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about that. Get my two. Ooh. Why is it not rolling dice? There you go. And then let me quick check my. Real quick. And it was nimbleness, you said? Yes. Uh, that's a plus one. 
All right. So as soon as you get up and you start to walk, you feel your feet tighten and you start to fall forward, but you're able to catch yourself on the wall on the table next to you before slamming in to another patron. And you look down, you see that your shoes have been tied, your shoelaces have been tied together. And Valenos just starts laughing heavily and says, well, it seems like somebody can't hold their liquor. <laughs> yeah. Melando anyway. just kind of like ignores all of it and just tries to stay focused on just removing himself from the situation. And he's quietly looks at you and says, always remember that I did this to you. <laughs> and Blando says, don't worry, I won't forget. Like he always does when they make these jokes with one another. Yep. And when you head upstairs, Tarbin and Iriel, you will hear some people start to uh, see a cloaked shorter person walk into Bree and uh, he pulls his cloak back and you can see that what may have looked like a mere child to your eyes is actually a halfling. Uh, you can see his face is a little scarred up uh, with some fresh scratches, his clothes torn, um, possibly had fallen through some brush, maybe gotten chased by an animal, um, but he, without even talking to anybody, walks to the back room where there is a, a it's a couple of people stationed outside of the door and you start to hear them laugh and say that the uh what's the name i didn't write it down um that fuzzy foot has finally arrived and they start laughing and pat him on the back and shut the door and let him in and helga looking at this person says that she knows him, and she says that is Kodale Nephi Betel, friend of Lotho ba Sackville Baggins. Is it common that they travel outside of the Shire? What's that? <laughs> is it common that they travel outside of the Shire? Uh, common, yeah. I mean, you have some hobbits working here, and they make accommodations. Um, she says that Lotho was kind of a big deal. Uh, he's pretty rich. Um, why he would be this far out east is a little weird. But, um, meh. Yeah. The Sackville Bagginses are wealthy people. They're, she tells you that they're very uh, greedy. Um, kind of like wasps. If you know the you know, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but to be so invited, and he was, I'm sorry, he was also carrying a weathered briefcase and an overstuffed backpack. Which is not typical for hobbits to probably be carrying such stuff. Hmm. Well... <clears throat> I think with that, uh, Tarvin will slam down another cup of mead, and he is going to put on a very drunken act yep. and start stumbling over to where they disappeared. He went into a door in the back room. Um, there's two men standing in front of it. They're not. They're dressed like farmers. They're not, you know, they're not wearing business suits and look like bouncers or anything like that. Just like more so a couple of hillbillies. Um, Ariel, what are you doing? I was going to ask um, if nobody was going to go back there. I was going to do that, but I, my thing messed up and I had to restart. So it's oh, no. good that Dustin is um, going back there. Um. <sighs> And the waiter you said that came in, he's the hobbit as well, correct? Nob, yeah. Is he, like, walking around, or is he just, like, in the back cleaning up things? No, Nob's running back and forth, cleaning, bussing tables, trying to, you know, keep things tidy. Butterbird doesn't seem to be too obsessed with cleanliness. He's just serving food and drink. Okay. Um, I would be paying attention to Nob, so if he came over, like, near where I was, um, I would strike up a conversation with him. 
Okay, so let's start with Dustin. So you, I'm sorry, Tarbin. So you drunkenly try to walk over to this door with the two uh, quote unquote guards. Yep. Okay, and they say, "Whoa, ho there, little man. I don't think Ooh. you're uh, quite invited to this party." Oh. I think it you do not know who I am. I am the life of the party. I was asked to go back here and show you tall people how to drink. The other man looks at you and says, <laughs> You hear that? He's the life of the party. Well, show us what makes you the life. And Carbon will reach into his pocket and pull out a piece of gold. And immediately their eyes light up. But the funny thing is, is I love to party so much. Would you like this gold coin so I can party back there? Uh, they both look at each other. Um, they say, well, we could hold on to that gold coin for you and uh, we could Actually, see I, if you could come back I have, there. I have the... A magic trick. Would you be interested in seeing this magic trick? I would actually love to see a magic trick. Let's see what you got. Do you have a copper coin? Uh, uh -huh. And the other guy says, yeah, 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 here I go. Here I got tons of copper coins. Not gold, but <laughs> copper. Here you go. Well, my magic trick does a... And he carbon leans in real close. It is a magic trick that I learned from a witch. A witch? Now you seem like trustworthy men, so I will share a secret uh. with you. I will turn your copper coin into a gold coin. And they start licking their, they start licking their lips. Would you <clears throat> like to see it? Uh, yeah. One of them named Travis? No. Hey! <laughs> Yeah, I would love to see this trick. Let's let's see it. So Tarpon will hold out his hand for the copper coin. Yeah, he Put puts the copper it... coin into my pen. He puts it into your hand. And Tarpon will close his fist. Then he'll shake his hand about and pat his chest. And as he pulls out his hand, there's a gold coin in it. Now, is this an ability, or are you just are you just trying to pull one over on them? No, oh, this is an ability. This is this is the Tarvin swapping one of his gold coins for copper. <laughs> I got you. So let me roll uh, some dice here and see if they're able to. I'll have them make an appraise check. Uh, and give me a, what's the one? Give me a, there, what would it be? I guess it would be, per, give me a persuade. Oh, very nice. <laughs> so uh the guy who gives you the coin looks at it real hard looks at you he gives you a discerning eye and he goes to pick up the gold coin yep he takes it, he takes it. He puts it up to his eye doing it back and forth bites on it and goes ah well that's a gold coin if i've ever seen one this uh how'd you do it this magic um he looks over at the other guy and says hey, he's pretty useful we we could probably use him <laughs> and the other guard says all right but i get credit for introducing him to haldun or what do i have his name as to yeah haldun uh and the guy says as long as i can keep the gold coin 
and the other man says, that's fine, you can keep it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Haldun would like that very much. So and he opens up the door, and the smell of smoke and, uh, I won't say we leaf, just blasts through the door. Um, <laughs> inside, you can see that the hobbit that walked in has opened up his suitcase, and it is just overflowing with different types of leaves and bags. Uh, these people are enjoying a smoke fest unlike no other, um, mm -hmm. and they invite you in. And you can see, do you want it privately or openly? Openly is fine. The room is filled with a bunch of smell. I mean, outside of the smell of the leaf, you can smell dirt. Uh, these men have very rugged clothing. It's almost like some of these guys are wearing rags. The man in the back who seems to be is sitting by himself is a poorly dressed, messy, bearded human with missing teeth. You can see him. He's just holding a pipe inside the tooth that's missing. Um, and with the hand that he's holding the pipe with, there's two fingers missing on his, uh, with his right hand. He's missing two fingers and his, uh, through some of the other missing teeth, you see that his forked tongue is coming through. Like he's just uh. amused with his own musings. Um. Uh, and uh, the room may be filled with 20 or so men. You can see uh, v rusted swords and um, daggers skittered about. Uh, the whole, these people don't look up and up. You know, they look like degenerates, uh, almost homeless people. Um, that is what you're being seeing when they open the door. You walking in? Oh yeah. All right. Do you want to continue, or do you want to bounce to somebody else? I'm gonna bounce. Yeah, I'm gonna bounce to Lauren. Okay. Sup, dog? Uh, uh. So Nob's running back and forth, busting tables. He's not really paying attention to what's going on. You can see this is somebody who's very dedicated to their work. Maybe a little shy uh, with the bigger folk. But when somebody gives him a tip, he makes it a point to bow and curtsy, um, and they get a laugh out of it. You can see that he's definitely playing on the fact that they're, you know, making fun of him for his size. But, uh, he's, you know. So I've been watching him. He's cleaning up messes, even if people are, um, like, if they're at their table and they're making a mess, he's coming over and cleaning it up, or is he only focusing on empty no, tables? He's, no, he's cleaning up people who are making a mess. He's, you know. It's the food falling on the floor, uh, drinks being spilled, he's taking rags, you know, trying not to bring any mop buckets around, but he's just trying to keep up and make the place look nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, when he has his back turned, um, I will fill a little bit of my drink on the table, I'm not trying to, like, be ridiculous, but I'll spill a little bit, and um, I'll put my hand up and say, um... Oh, I'm sorry. Could I um, have a rag to clean this up with, please? And immediately, his ears pick up, and you can see he's looking around to see what he hears, and he sees you, and he starts blushing a little bit, and he runs over. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry there, miss. Are you okay? Did you did you have an accident? Yeah, I accidentally spilled some of my drink. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you don't have to apologize. It's, it's quite a... And he starts trying to take a rag, and the rag is already dripping wet from what you can only imagine is a mix of saliva, mead, and uh. food gunk, trying to clean it off. And he's more ma he's making more of a mess than he and he's just spreading the liquid around, so it kind of looks like it's drying up. It's like, it's, it happens all the time, Miss. Don't it's okay. Nothing to be upset about. So, um, am I mistaken? Are you a hobbit? <laughs> Uh, you're not mistaken. I'm not, I'm not a child, <laughs> as, as, as everybody likes to make fun of me for. But yes, uh, I am a halfling. Oh, I wasn't making fun of you. I was honestly curious. Um, are do you live like in the Shire, or do you live around here? Oh, I currently reside around here. I moved here uh, 15 years ago. Oh, interesting. Have a lot of family back there. Uh, not not so much. Uh, it's just me, my mother, and she died, and then I came here. Ah. Oh. Damn. I'm sorry about that. Well, you're doing a good job, and I take out a silver, a piece of silver, and I uh, hand it to him. Thank you for that up. He almost oh, chokes a oh, 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 coin of silver, mess. Oh, oh. And he starts trying to rub the whole table down furiously. 
and the food is starting to fall off the napkin and the table's starting to reek and he just tries more and more as he feels embarrassed. He's like, oh, it's no good, it's no good. I'll have to get more drags, I'm so sorry. You're, you're fine. Thank you so much. And then he runs off to go get more rags. Uh, and you hear people around you laugh or laughing um, because you can hear everything. And uh, this is for like a small man, he makes big messes and, you know, <laughs> just taking shots. I'm going to turn, hey, oh. turn and look at like whoever said it and just like give them like a death stare. Oh shit, she heard me. <laughs> he just like turns his head. <laughs> just, like trying not to lock eyes with you. Yeah, and I'm just gonna like look around. Like, yeah, that's what I thought. All right, um, Valathrang, Thang, you run out of Bree. Uh, the night watchman stops you before you leave and says, "Oh, sorry, sir. Where are you heading late this evening?" Ah, good. Really? You're mute. This will be Valathrang. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait as I'll wait as long as you can. He <laughs> just sits there. Uh, Valandiel, you make it to your room, um, and Great. it sounds like you can see a light on in there. Somebody's already in your room. Uh, I take out uh, my long sword, and I just slowly and stealthily approach the uh, the door. Anor, you hear some cautious footsteps, and you can hear the unsheathing of a sword on the other side of the door. And the heavy breathing gonna, of a human. I'm just gonna sit there and look when he walks in. Okay. Valandiel. So Valandiel, you know, stealthily, you know, takes his key and puts it into the the keyhole as silently as he can, and then turns it, waits for it to like do a click, and as soon as he hears the click, he flings open the door and goes and run, you know, and just runs in straight to the room with his sword held high. Uh, Anor, you always see... such a... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> always such a dramatic entrance. And as soon as uh, Valandiel sees Anor, he uh, quickly, you know, kind of like I wouldn't say he's embarrassed, but he's definitely not happy with with how he reacted with such an insignificant situation. And so, he reaches a sword and says, "I uh, I didn't realize anybody was coming up to to beat me here. So welcome. I I I, I apologize." It's okay. I walked past you as you were having a conversation. Oh yes, uh, that's one of my uh, one of my companions from the. Uh, Wardens of the Grey Wood. He actually uh, shared with me this, and with that, Valandiel pulls out the map that uh, that um, Valanos gave him. Ooh, I will look. And Valandiel begins to explain that the circled areas are where orcs have been reported, and that the X's are outposts where people have been reported missing, but up when investigated, the people are there that were supposedly reported missing. Hmm. Did I repeat that correctly, Bill? Yep, farms where people are missing, but they're but when they went to investigate, the they were inhabited. Awesome, thank you. So they were they were told people were missing, but when they went there, people were there working the farms. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. And so I share that with you, Anor. Hmm. That's that's, that's a lot to think over. It's a a lot to consider. Um, if we have and 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 he begins to share. Um, he says, it, it, "What Valnos told me is that there are orcs moving west from the mountains, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's." in some sort of relation with this situation that we're currently pursuing. So we're definitely not alone as we're looking around for any whispers. Frodo. Um, he nods. 
Hmm. Any, um, who has the copy of the there and back again, or does it matter? Uh, All of us do. I think is what. Well, there's, I there's one copy. Yeah, there's one copy. Uh, I mean, oh, okay. is, if it's important for you to have it, we can say you have it. I was just gonna read it. Okay. Yeah. See what I, mean, I can. Yeah, you've you've all read it. Uh, I would assume you've all read it at this point. I mean, it's not very long. It's only you know one book. It's not one story broken up into three different books. <laughs> Or yeah. six different movies, or whatever it is. But yeah, I mean, uh, if you were going back through it, we could just say you have it. Okay. Because I would like to 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 reread it and you know see what I can come up with. Okay. Is there anything specific you're trying to look for in the book that would help you, or? Um, I guess I'd just go back to the the mountain and go over. Um, his interactions with uh, who he got the ring from. I got it from Golem. Uh, he found it, and you see the thing about the... Uh, there's very little about their interaction outside of the riddles. Um, right. But he did mention that the creature, you know, gangly, incredibly misshapen, is yeah. not something that you would have ever read about or heard about like the physical descriptions of the creature it, it's not it, it's like orc like but not or you know not at the same time just a completely different creature than you've ever read about ever right i mean it's going to take a little while to read this overnight so i mean i can rest and read at the same time Okay. And the land deal, what are you doing? Uh, so he's reading that book, and I take this time to be able to, um, you know, kind of bathe after I've eaten, and, and after two weeks on the road, I'm probably a little gamey, so I took the opportunity to be able to, to bathe and to kind of get ready for the, the, the next day where we're going west to the Shire. So there's a clawfoot tub in there, but it doesn't have a curtain. That's fine. He's not worried away. about it. He, I, I, he didn't even worry about it. Just, I just, whatever. You know, he's, he's been hanging around with nothing but dudes most of his life, so he doesn't even care. It doesn't even bother him. Okay. It's fine. Shower talk. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so that's it for the two of you then? Cool. Yep. Yeah. All nope. Right. I'm ready. After that, I go, I go sleepy time and, you know, totally not weird that, that some dude I just met like a couple weeks ago is just going to watch me sleep all night. So, Tarbin. Well, I'm reading oh, actually, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes it a little bit better. So, Tarbin, you walk in, and all the men start staring at you, and um, I guess you could imagine that the person in the back is Halden. And um, Kodale immediately says, uh, So, do you know when Lotho will be back? I, you know, people keep asking. Uh, I have no problem making these deliveries. I'm, I'm more than happy to, to do these for Lotho, but I would just like to know if you know when he would be back at all. And Haldun puts his hand up and says, do not speak about Lotho in front of strangers. And one of the guards, uh, the one you didn't give the coin to, walks over and starts whispering, whispering in Haldun's ear. And Haldun immediately sits up and takes a knife out of it, uh, like stands up, takes a knife off his belt and slams it into the table and looks at you and says, What prim and proper dwarf seeks to give me fortunes? I am the life of the party. Ah, yes, and you have definitely caught in the eye of some of my men, but... Is this a simple parlor trick? Are you trying to get one over on us? How much of a life could you give to or could you offer? And you see this like My... like forking his tongue like a snake through his teeth. That is a neat trick you do with your tongue. And then you hear one of the guys say, Oh, he's talking about his tongue. That's not good. He's like, Do not talk about my tongue, dwarf. <laughs> It's hard not to notice, sorry. I have had quite a bit to drink already. As I told your door guards, 
is I like to party. Oh, you like to party, do you, Mr. Proper? I mean, how are you dressed? Um, basically just in road garb. I mean, okay, I thought you were, because you thought you were more fancied up. That could have been me. Uh, if, like, if I'm in, like, Rivendell and stuff like that, he definitely would be, but, um. Okay, my fault. Kind of seeing the state of the, how Bree is, I don't think he'd come in advertising wealth, necessarily. Uh, my fault. And then he, like, rubs his eyes and says, well, uh, let's, if you, <laughs> sorry, what was the thing you said before that, before I interrupted you? <laughs> I had a line. I can't remember what it was. I don't want to mess this up. I said that he was the life of the party and the... And you enjoyed the drink, right? Yeah. Yes. I had a little bit to drink earlier and I am, as you say, wound up. Would you care yeah. to indulge yourself in, in delights west of the mines? Something you wouldn't find in the coal and gems of your kind? Are you trying to let me have a good time? Is this what I'm hearing? You're the life of the party. Don't you want to have a good time? <laughs> Who doesn't? You see some saliva starting to pour from his lip. Ew. Um, he, he looks at Coldlay and smacks him upside the head. He's like, give our friend some of your finest leaf. And Coldlay, you know, not used or not unused to being hit, as you can tell, just immediately goes over to his suitcase and starts uh, taking the leaf and hitting it with a mortal and pestle and putting it into a pipe shakingly and brings it over to you and says, "Here you go, sir. Long bottom leaf, familiar?" Yes, I've heard great tales of a. Oh, but uh, Mr. Bilbo Baggins was quite fond of this. And Coldlay looks at you and says, uh, like, wide-eyed. Um, do, uh, are you friends with Bilbo? Good back long ways, yes. Um, and you can see his eye, like his, like the scared look across his face. And his hands start to shake a little bit as they moves away from handing you the pipe. And uh, Haldun says, well, breathe in deep, my friend. Uh. Urban wine. Hit that shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Uh, give me a health check. That should be good. No, it's not a health check. It's a vitality check. Weed check. Sorry. Huh? A what? Nothing. Keep going. What did you say? A weed check. A weed, yeah, I wish. I need to look at a character sheet to make sure I'm giving you the right checks. But right for right now, we'll just do vitality. Vitality? Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be high for you. A 10. Now you just hit the number on it. I was going to give you a level of weariness if you didn't hit it, but you got it. Uh, as soon as you breathe this in deep, you feel your lungs start to burn. Um, and as you, you, you can even smell it as you're inhaling it. Uh, it starts out a little bitter, but then it has a sweet aftertaste. Um, almost makes you feel like you're frolicking through an open field. Um, as you go to exhale, are you coughing? Are you taking it? Oh, he's going to put on a show like this. This is the first time he's done this. And Haldun oh, wow. starts laughing. He goes, <laughs> again! You want me to hit it again? Now give me another roll. Uh, 
Uh, and you're one under it. So this time you breathe in again, and your head gets a little mild a headache. Uh, the, the, there is no sweet taste this time. It's pretty bitter, and you get one level of weariness to you, sir. So you are now winded, which isn't that bad. You get minus one to rolls, and you can get rid of it with ten minutes of rest. And what is your yeah. expression this time? He will have a smile on his face. And he'll probably have a little bit of tears streaking down his his eyes from the coughing. <laughs> and then he leans in and uh, looks at you and says, Now show us that trick again. Damn. Well, for the for the magic trick to work, I need a copper coin. So this is Ledgerman. That was the check you should have made. My my bad. So um, he hands you several copper copper coins. Uh, Arbin will look and he'll take one of the copper coins. Do you have any points in Ledgerman? Yes, I do. Oh, good. There you go. All right. And this is for that. Yep. So you get a minus one to your roll against his observe. You know what? How many times am I going to roll a five and a two? <laughs> as, many times, times as many times as you need to. <laughs> so he observes and he looks and he looks at his men, looks back at you and says, You could be a very worthy friend. What was your name? My name is Valen Trey. Valen Trey. How would you like to be one of the most richest men in Erebor? Oh. Money always speaks to me. <laughs> men, you finally have given me a prize worthy of your stature. And he starts, leans back in his chair and continues to smoke and drink and party with you if you were going to stay in there and party with him for the rest of the night. Oh. Um, the, the Hobbit. Was it Coltrane? Is that what his name was? Uh, the Hobbit's name is Kodale. Nephi Metal. Uh, are you so, back? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dustin. Oh, I was I was just gonna say that Tarvin's gonna he'll stay in kind of party, but he's gonna keep an eye on Nephi. And does Nephi like acknowledge him at all? Like look look at Tarvin at all? Uh, uh, outside of the one thing, you can tell this guy's pretty scared for his life. Um, if you're gonna stay in there the whole night, he's going to give you a piece of paper. Um, it's going to make it look like it's rolling paper, but you can yeah. see clearly, I mean, he's, he's being as stealthy as he can. You can tell that he knows these people. He knows how and when he can do certain things. Um, but they don't really say anything in front of you. They just, you know, swap stories. They're not giving you any information you would have, you know, worth giving you other than, uh, you know, just being nasty, dirty men. <laughs> Ew. Uh, maybe talking about some hot elf chick sitting outside at a table and what they would do to that short hobbit girl. Oh. <laughs> uh, it looks bigger in hobbit hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he will give you that note. I assume you're not going to read it in front of him, but the rest of the night will be them partying with you, partying with them, if that's fine with you. Yep. All right. Is Valathang back? Death? Shit, I've been here the whole time. Fuck. I have my mic on mute because I was uh, calling someone. 
Oh, yeah, no. I've been, 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 been here the whole time. I've been listening to everything that's been going on. I'm here. No, I asked you earlier. Uh, I was questioning you as the city guard or town night watch guard. Yeah, yeah. I, I said something, and you said, all right, we'll just sit here then. And I, I was didn't like, hear well, anything. Yeah, yeah, well, that's my bad. I fucked up. Uh, okay, so basically I would just walk up to him and say, I need to head out. I won't be back until the morning. Uh, thank you very much. <sighs> Uh, all right. You, you you don't need a re-entry. Um, not until the morning, sir. All right. Well, uh, take this. He gives you a band. He's like, just so you know, we, you know, you were here. Uh, you know, I don't want to cause sure. you any problems. It's be careful out there. You know, strange, strange things happening. People missing in, but somehow not missing in. So you know, <laughs> keep your head on a swivel. I appreciate you giving me the heads up, sir. I flip him a silver piece and say thanks for the tip. He grabs it and says, well, what, what was your name? Just uh, just in case you, you know, may go missing. I'm, I'm Valif Thang. Thang. Jesus Christ, I do it to myself. Fuck. Okay. I'm Valif Thang. All right. Valif Thang. You see he walks over to a book and he writes it in there and he says, hope you don't go missing in. Hope I don't also. All right. With that, I bid you good evening, sir. Sorry, and I, I uh, would have addressed that with you earlier. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no. Um, anyway, and then I make my way to my troops. Can you give like, me two observe rolls, please? If your first one is decent enough, then you will not have to make a second. As I will make a roll as well. It's 2d6, right? 2d6 plus whatever your observe ranks are. Oh shit! Ooh, well, the first one God. ain't good. That's that's a that's a that's a six. All right. Well, they roll. I don't know why I did minus one. I just clicked a d six and it automatically did that. Hmm. So my my first roll would be six. That's that's fine. They rolled a one. It's so, a GM roll. That's a that, you roll. Yeah, that's me rolling. I rolled because yeah, they're rolling. I'm sorry. A... It, it popped up right as I went to roll it, and I thought it was hmm. mine. My first one's ten. That's fine. So you will. My second one is seven. That's fine. You, your first one was enough because they rolled a one. <laughs> so oh, you, okay. You will, as you walk your mile outside of town, you will see some torches uh, and some loud hooting and hollering um, from a bunch of a group of men. Um, you being an elf, you'd be able to see them way before they could yeah, even tell you were there. Thing. Right, yeah. So they just look raggedy, filthy, dirty, um, you know, strained hair, bald, some amputees, uh, some only wearing what looks to be like a makeshift diaper. Uh, and you see oh. them start to f corral around a farmhouse. And some of them go in, and you hear women screaming and men hollering. And as I hear the first woman scream, I pull my warhammer and advance on them from the rear oh, at full speed. All right. So we will resolve that in a little bit. Hope you don't die. Um, we go to Eriel. Are you just sitting there hanging out? Eriel. Eriel. Thank you, Travis. I got you, homie. Eriel. Ariel. Ariel. I'm the DM. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just taking in the room. I'm just paying attention, like, listening around, elf ears, seeing if I hear anything about the ring, about anything. Anything that can be useful to us. I'm basically just sitting and listening. Would I also be able to hear what's going on with Dustin? If you were paying attention, so I'm looking at elves as Superman and in Superman thing, uh, and Superman talk, if it was loud enough and uh, an alarming sound, he'd be able to focus in and hear on it. But if you're just naturally sitting there, you'd have to, like, be intently trying to listen to what's going on the other side of the door. So if you're not okay. focusing on the door, I'm going to say no. Okay. Because then, you would, cause then I could say then you could hear Anor and Valandiel going at it. Hey. I. What? Um, all right. Um, hey, I don't put anything past phrasing, you guys. No, phrasing. no, I said it. I said it the way I wanted to say it. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm. I'm basically listening. I'm putting my focus into scanning, like around the tavern, and 
seeing if I can hear anything worth our while. Like, I mean, like I said, I don't plan on going upstairs until the tavern closes, so I'm just using my time in here what I think to be wisely. Um, and I'll get, I'll finish this and then get back to death. So the the night starts to cool down. Nob uh, keeps walking by you and smiling every so often. Uh, Butterbur will keep asking if you need anything, if you require anything. Um, you being an elf, he probably comes to you with a little more properness. Um, you know, he doesn't want to be seem insulting to one of the elven kind. But uh, Tarbin, uh, Holodun, at towards the end of the night, looks at you and says, um, he hands you a piece of paper, and on it is a circle. Uh, it's a, like a, a little hand-drawn map leading out of Bree um, to the southeast hills. And he says, I can give you keys. Oh, wait, no. I can give you the keys to the land you could never dream of, friend. All you have to do is a little thing for us, and we will do a lot of things for you. Uh. The winds of change are coming to Arador, and you'll want to be on the upside of it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that is exactly what I like to hear. Uh. It's always good to be on the good side. Meet me here. Well, I should say, come here tomorrow night. We'll find you. And uh, make sure you're ready to make uh, some more magic happen. We will need funds for what we have planned. And they all start to pour out of the room. Uh, so, Ariel, you will hear, you will see them all start to walk out in a big puff of smoke uh, as the door opens up. A lot of them slash are sloshed and hammered and, you know, pushing themselves out of the room. You, uh, Haldun Hol walks out of a door in the back. He doesn't go through the inn. Um, are you walking out with the rest of the guys? Yeah, gonna I'm going to walk <laughs> back to where I originally was and sit down okay. next to Ariel. And you will see Tarbin probably lit up <laughs> a little weary. Yep. Well, those guys are up to no good. <laughs> and as I sit down, I'm going to look at that note. And if you gave me, uh, and it'll just say, "Please help." <laughs> oh. And um, you saw that. Uh, Do Kobe, I see him still? Uh, he walked out with. Uh, he walked out with Haldun. Um, but yeah, it says, "Please help, <laughs> friend of Bilbo." <laughs> and he's talking about himself. He's a friend of Bilbo. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you can't can't have too much. It was all rapid. It was all rolling papers. But yeah, right. But the poor Hobbit has got himself into quite the trouble. Sorry, the Hobbit has got himself in quite a bit of trouble. <laughs> yes. So the one from the back room. Why? What is he doing? He is. Selling them various forms of long bottom leaf. Oh. And I told him that I was old friend of Bilbo and he had panic look in his eyes and he left me this note. And I'll pass it over. Help me. Yes. I had told them I knew magic how to turn copper coins into gold, which would be nice if I really did know how to do that, but I merely swapped coins so I could get inside. Now they want me to join their group and make them lots of money. I'm supposed to meet them here tomorrow night. 
Harp is joining the, the circus confirmed. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding. You lied to them, did a magic trick. She puts quotes up with magic. Got in there to a shady place and saw that a hobbit who apparently knows Bilbo is basically being held captive but selling Longbottom Leaf. Is the gist of it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> can we not just can we not just take the hobbit? We're going to the Shire. Well he went out the back door with uh, head honcho. I'll do You don't know where they're going? He said he gave me a map, right? Just like a yeah, hand drawn scribble, and you can see that he's he's having you meet him in the hills to the southeast. Yes, I'll show her that. He wants you to meet them there tomorrow in the southeast. Tomorrow night. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And which way we're traveling? We're traveling west. Yes. They're walking there now, though. Yes. Well, those guys just left the bar. You don't know which way they're going. Um. So Arabella stands up and walks to the door and sees it, if she can see which way they're walking. Uh, they look like they're going uh, towards the north gate, but or the east gate. But then they turn uh, after you see them like kind of pushing the night watch guard around a little bit. Uh, and with your eyes, you can see that they rummage his pockets, and they look, and they see that he's got a silver coin, and one of them goes, where did you get this? And the guard's like, oh, somebody tipped me. I, I, it, was a, it was a gift. And like, uh, you better have another gift tomorrow night, and puts it in his pocket, and they both, uh, they all go into a couple rows of ha uh, row homes of houses, and they go into two of the houses there. Was the Hobbit with them? No. So the uh, Hobbit didn't walk out with them. There, you have two separate. Yeah, Holdun and the other Hobbit walked out a different door. So you're following the main group of people, which is probably uh, like 19 of them, uh, split up oh into two God. houses. So you know, 19 divided by two, that and one one like person's cut in half. But yeah. Oh, and now. Oh. So oh, okay. I'll put them on the. I'll let me pull out the Bree map. I'll just, I'll just put a circle around the houses they go to. Sorry, I'm setting up Death's map. Uh, there, these two houses right here. Just for the sake of the argument. Is there anything else? Um, anything else, Lauren? No, she'll just walk back over um, and sit down and say, well, they're staying in the row homes back there. I mean, is there the a particular... Doom. Go ahead, sorry. Haldun and uh, Niffy the Hobbit went out the back door, so they may be someplace else. Interesting. And we... You mean, do you think we should help this Hobbit? Uh, normally, I would not pay too much mind to this, but he looked generally terrified. Like he doesn't expect to make it much longer. I have half a oh. mind to march my dwarfs over and... I was going to say, I mean, maybe... If... Now, he's saying he's going to meet you over there, just him and that other guy, or those dudes that are over in the Rohams as well. I would imagine he probably has a larger gang that will be there. I doubt that it will be just him and the, the Hobbit. And you want to send just your dwarves to go and retrieve him? Well, I honestly think it would be a good idea to have everybody have an opinion on this. Okay. Yeah, I'd be open to discussing it with them. Where did well, go ahead, sir. Um, I believe he went upstairs 
with Josh Darn it, Travis, what's your character's name? Philandial. Philandial. I don't believe they're in the same room together. Oh wow, well, come on. Well I need to go wash my face because I I'm not as young as I used to be and that was not the most fun I've had. Hmm, doesn't sound very much like it. Is Helga still down here? Yes. Helga's closing down the bar. Okay. Well, it looks like you can get up there before Helga does, because she seems to be staying down here as long as I'm going to be staying down here. They kind of figured that she would have the other room. She would have the other room? Yes, the, the room that we were supposed to share. I could get a few winks in a chair. I'll I'll be fine. Helga's got her own room. Yeah. You both have your own room. Oh, so I have my room and she has her room? Mm hmm They had two hobbit rooms which you both could live in or sleep in. Oh. That's cool. Huh. But Tar Tarvin's gonna go in Landil's room. <laughs> okay. Oh god. Alright. Well, um, we'll have you guys. I don't want to go too far without Helga there. So if you guys are calling it a good calling a night, let's go do our yeah. first thing at combat with. So I'm on map uh, Brief Farm Death. I'm pulling it up. You have Brief so farm. just just so you know, you have two attacks. There are two actions per round. You can move and attack. Some abilities grant extra actions, um, but basically you can move up to 18 yards in a turn. So we'll say, you know, we'll just give you 20, uh, four blocks a turn. Um, you can attack more than once, but if you do, then you got to start making checks to see if you lose, uh, if you get weariness levels. And remember, the way health works, if you have 9 health, then you technically have, like, 45 health because they're, they're levels. Once you lose 9 health, you go down a level to injured. And then it's kind of, it's kind of like vampire. You get a negative you get a negative 1 to your rolls, and then after injured, you get wounded. It's a negative 2 to all your rolls. So there's stages to health. Um, all right. Keep that in mind. I do have a question. Yes. So they're they're busy murdering all the people in here. There's it, it, you saw seven, and now there's five. They're all surrounding this farm, and it, they're they're not. It's not on fire, but it's the first map I had for a farm. There's five people sure. inside. You can hear women, uh, a woman and a man screaming inside. So there's five outside right now. They will have no way to know that you are coming because you are an elf. And these are just barbaric, homeless men. Um, they're not wearing any type of armor. They have pitchforks, broken blades, clubs. I mean, they, they don't look like they're, they're fit to harm or fight anybody. With great hammer in hand, I'm going to circle around the back and come up right in between these two fellows right here. And I'm going to attack the one on the left, the Dark Stalker Hold 7. On. By the time you walk out, or by the time you circle circle around, you will see that the two men, the two of those men come out of the house dragging one of the men um, who is limp. He's not moving. Um, and you see them throw him in, in onto the ground. Um, and then somebody starts chopping him up. You can, and you see the men, one of the men say, Finally, we can eat. My question involves this. Go ahead, Dustin. Sorry. So I sent my dwarfs that I had with me out, so mm -hmm. they would technically be with a desk character. They would Because if he's going to his... Yeah, I had uh, five that were with me, and I sent them to relay the message. Oh, uh, okay. So they would be with him because... Okay. So let me put five dwarves on here. Along. Do you have the stats for them? I do not, actually. No, well, that's going to be a problem. Um, I can speak dwarvish, but I guess I would do something like... You can't speak dwarvish. Right, but I, I would do something like... Uh, 
hear the scream, point to my ear, <laughs> the great hammer, slap the front of it, and then run towards the noise. Okay. Uh... Yeah. Sound language enough to get my point across, I think. Yeah. I think have so. that shit to me about. Yeah. So I'm finished sneaking around on these guys. And uh, then... They would... Well, hold on. Since you got the dwarves with you, that's going to change things a little bit. Okay. Because well, they would probably hear the dwarf. <laughs> all right. Well, you tell me then how... Well, how yeah. I'm, you, you'll be able to run around. Uh, but okay. They can't hear you, so I'm assuming they're going to keep going forward. Um, they hear the dwarves. Oh. When they go for the dwarves, I'll take their back in line. Out. Yeah, so I'm not even going to make them roll. I would, they're going to be able to hear the dwarves. And they're going to start moving towards them. Um, so you, while, you, while you run around, uh, that one for they stop chopping up that dude. They see the, the dwarves, and they all start running towards them. Well, actually, like, as soon as these two guys, the guy that was adjacent to me, you just moved him? Yeah. I'd step in between these two guys and blast Docker 7. All right. So that's going to be your move and your attack. So go ahead and roll your 2d6 to hit. Uh, do I add the martial weapon proficiency or whatever? Or, or arm combat? Yes. Okay. Uh, whoops. Wrong buton. That's a 14. 14 is going to hit. Uh, so... Let me see. It's. I'm probably going to stop this here. Not you. Because...